part two. So last week, Pastor Bola just started teaching us very powerfully about what we need to do when finances become tight. What do we need to do when finances become tight? And one of the things that you know, I love our church for is the fact that aside the preaching of the word of God, we, even within the preaching of the word of God, we try to give you a very clear, balanced, and practicable approach to your finances. You know, as we all grew up, you know, a lot of us grew up with the mindset of, you know, there's that famous song, give and it shall come back to you. Praise God. Good measure. Press down. And running. Oh, there's even melody inside. Is that correct? Yeah. Is it complete? No. Because giving is not, is not the only thing you have to do. Praise Jesus. Giving is not the only thing you have to do. So every time people come and say, oh, all you must do is just give. <laughs> we have tried it too. <laughs> we have seen that there's nothing there. Glory to God. So let's start today. And one of the first things I want to tell you is this. There are principles when it comes to money and financial wealth. There are principles. So there is an understanding that you must have. There is a mindset you must have. There are some things you must know. And above all else, there are things you must what? Do. The challenge with a lot of us is this. We have ideas about finances. We, we have thoughts about it. But that ability to do is so difficult. It's, that's where I see a lot of Christians have challenge. See, they come to church and say, Pastor, I've heard this, I've heard this, I've heard this. Oh, yeah, why are you not doing it? They will now come up with all sorts of theories. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. All right, so let's start in our reading today. And let's open our Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 30. I'm going to read from the book of Genesis chapter number 30 from verse 25. Genesis chapter 30 from verse 25. The Bible says, And it came to pass when Rachel had born Joseph that Jacob said unto Laban, Send me away that I may go unto my own place and to my country. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served thee and let me go. For thou knowest my service which I have done thee. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thy eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for thy sake. Isn't this so interesting? The guy said, oh, I want to go. He said, come on. You know, he started giving him, he started toasting him. He said, come on, because of you, I'm blessed, you know. And that's how they toast a lot of you in the office. You know that it's time to resign. Your boss comes and says, ha, ah, how can you go now? See the opportunity ahead. My brother, there will always be opportunity ahead. If there's no opportunity ahead, the business would have crashed. So don't say you are staying because of opportunity ahead. Because they say, ah, why have you not resigned? Ah, my boss said that something's coming next year. Something will always be coming. That's why the business is in business, praise God. If there's nothing coming, the business will shut down. And they will sack you without thinking twice. I'm not saying that just go and resign blindly. I'm saying when it's time, it's time. Glory to God. When it's time is what? It's time. That's what Jacob said. He said, I need to go and have my own thing. One of the principles of finances is this. You should have your own thing. A lot of us, the only way we make money is dependent on the emotions of some other people. And you want to be wealthy. Let's continue. And Laban said unto him, verse 27, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thy eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. Verse 28, and he said, appoint me thy wages, and I will give it. And he said unto him, 
Thou knowest how I have served thee, and how thy cattle was with me, for it was little which thou hast before I came, and it is now increased unto a multitude. And the Lord hath blessed thee since my coming. And now, when shall I provide for my own house also? Career people, you want to justify promotion. You say, my, 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 my boss, promote me. Why? I've been here for five years. Length of time is not enough to justify promotion. See what he said. He said, see, this is where you were. After I came, this is how far you have come. How many of you can say that? But you just come. It's two years now. It's time to be promoted. You say, who? And we've said this before. Aging happens normally. Meaning, we all grow old. If you like it or you don't like it, you are older now than you were when you entered this church. Praise God. Don't be angry. Be excited. But guess what? Growth is not automatic like that. Jacob came and he said, see, this is where you were. But see what has happened by the work of my hand. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. And he said, what shall I give thee? And Jacob said, thou shalt not give me anything. If thou will do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep thy flock. I will pass through all thy flock today removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle and all the brown cattle among the sheep and the spotted and speckled among the goats. And of such shall be my hire. When you stand before greatness, may you ask for the right thing. May you ask for the right thing. Because some of you, after you fight, 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 okay, you now want to leave the office. They say, no, don't leave. They say, what do you want? You say, eh, I just want a eh, 100,000 naira. Ha! That's all. So all these fights, it was over 100 k He said, see, don't give me salary anymore. Say, hey, pastor, no salary again. Yes. Salary is not the only way you make money. Praise God. It's one of the many ways. And that was one of the problems that, they, that we grew up with. Say, how do you make money? Have a big salary. That's why all of us wanted to die when Chevron and Shell did not call us. But why, you, why would you want to die? Think about it. Chevron, how many people can they employ? And there are some people that have federal character, you know, that there's, they are indigenous, helps them over you. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. So you will see that for Jacob, Jacob needed an increase. He needed to move forward from where he was. But when it was time to negotiate, he negotiated with the skill that he had. He negotiated with the skill that he had. See, when it comes to our finances, and this is a very fundamental principle we must all understand. Everybody, please pay attention. God deals, when it comes to the subject of multiplication in the kingdom, the subject of multiplication is interesting. The reason is this. Everything that God made, for it to multiply, whatever that thing needs to multiply, God made it with it. Let me say it again. When it comes to the principle of multiplication, everything that God made, he didn't just make it by itself. He made it with everything required for it to multiply. Glory to God. If you go to the book of Genesis, when God was making the animals, he didn't make them by themselves. He made fishes and he put them inside water. Why? Because as they are inside water, the fish and the water they need to grow and to reproduce and to continue to grow, everything was made together. When he made man, he didn't make man alone. He brought out the woman from the man and put them together. Why? The principle of reproduction can continue from there. God works in systems. God works in systems. When it comes to the seed, glory to God, every seed has multiple seeds on the inside of it. So when you see one seed, it's not one seed you see. You see a generation. When you see one seed, you see what? A generation. Abraham was alone. He says, you shall be a father of many nations. How? From just that one. 
I'm saying that to you because when it comes to the subject of your finances, the way God is going to bless you is going to bless you in multiple folds. It's in multiples. This is why you cannot be content with some things that you see. They increase your salary by 10%. You have, you have reached financial freedom. Is that all? Where's the system from there? Where's the wealth from there? Where's the multiplication from there? Glory to God. Glory to God. So when it comes to the subject of your finances, you must understand that the principle is this. It's in multiples. It's in multiples. It's in multiples. Someone say glory to Jesus. Someone say glory to Jesus. Someone say glory to Jesus. When, even when the flood was going to come and wipe out everything, God commanded, he said, take all the animals, male and female, why? So that the reproduction can continue. The system can continue. So even when I wipe out the old to establish the new, in the establishment of the new, I am still reproducing. Glory to Jesus. So multiplication in the kingdom has never been an option. Go and read Genesis chapter 1. See, whenever you read the Bible, don't read the Bible like a storybook. Because we read Genesis chapter 1. Ah, fish. He oh. <laughs> made the earth. Ay, it is not history. It is prophetic. Why? In the Bible, when he talks about multiply, he says go forth and multiply. It's not a wish, it's a command. It's not a wish, it's a command. He said go forth and multiply. He didn't say go forth and add one, add two. Actually, that might be your level currently, but you have not yet started living in what God has called you to do. What God has called you to do is to multiply. He says, go forth and multiply. And you know why I love it? He didn't say stay and multiply. Oh, glory to God. Some of you, and this is why your action is important. He said, go forth. You can't go forth by sitting down, my brother. You go forth by going forward. You don't go forth by sitting down. This is why some of you, your friends, is that you, you see, you have challenge. Because what are you doing? And this is why career can be very interesting. Because you just want to sit down on that desk and you, are, you, are, you, are, and you want things to move. My brother, you have to move for things to move. You see, oh God, this word is so interesting. It didn't even say, pray and multiply. It said, go forth and multiply. The multiplication happens in your action. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. So it's important to understand this. Because if you don't understand this working, I told you before, prayer cannot change mentality. Prayer cannot change mindset. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. So why are people financially tied? Why are people financially tied? The reason why people are financially tied, largely, and there are different reasons, but the major reason is a lack of wisdom. And because, oh, see, scripture is very prophetic. Scripture, the Lord knows, Jesus knows, that a time will come when people will need wisdom. That's why that scripture we prayed. You need to go back to that scripture. He says, any, if any man lack wisdom, because he knew people were going to lack wisdom. If any man I lack wisdom, let him ask of the Father that give it lavishly. You know why he said lavishly? Because he wants you to know that no matter the wisdom level you are looking for, it is available in me. You are looking for 100,000 wisdom is here. One million naira in wisdom is here. One billion naira wisdom is here. One billion dollar in wisdom is here. It is available. And um, he says, I want to give it lavishly. You know why he said so? Glory to Jesus. You know why he said so? Because it's as far as your eyes can see. So say, ah, you know, pastor, you, you know, it's not good to overdream. You know, you know, you just desire. You want too much money. There's not, see, there's nothing wrong with, with that desire. It depends on what is motivating it. It depends on what is motivating it. And let me tell you something. This is one of the tricks about wealth. The people that are wealthy, they want you to feel that you should not want it. The people that well did, you think the thing jumped on them? Go and check all of them. There was a strong desire. And that desire produced corresponding action for them to get where they are. So don't let anybody deceive you. Ah, no, no, no. Yeah, this desire for wealth, you must have it. 
Wisdom. Wisdom. So, quickly, three categories of reasons why people have financial problems or are financially tied. The first one is the wrong mentality about money. See, when you have an unhealthy mentality about money, you will be financially limited. What are some of the wrong mentalities people have about money? The one we talked about already is the single income source. What is your salary? What is your salary? That's it. How much are they paying you? My brother, they can pay you, but you can also pay yourself. They can pay you, but it's sweeter to pay yourself. They can determine your value. It's, it's, it's sweeter for you to determine your own value. The people that are wealthy, it's not the world that determines their value. They determine their value. So it is great to get a salary. There's nothing wrong with that. But who told you that that's where you must stop? Who told you that that's where you must stop? Even our Lord Jesus, in the book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 10 to 14, in the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Eden was fed by four rivers. Why didn't God just give it only one river if all he wants for us is salary? It's proved positive to you that it is not only one way that God wants you to make money. So, do you have one way of making money? Great. But, see, where is the evidence of the blessing? It says, the blessing will make it expand. And where is the expansion? There is expansion upward, I agree, grow up in your career, but there is expansion like this also. You must have multiple, anybody that is doing well must have multiple sources of income. And some says, it's too small. It's never too small. It's never too small. Start from wherever it is. Let me tell you what multiple sources of income does to you. It breaks a mindset in your mind. You know when we say all things are possible, eh? you know there are some things we say, Christians, all things are possible, all things are possible, all things are possible. Yes, but there are some things you must demonstrate that will now come and bring the reality of that scripture back to you. Say, Pastor, there is no time. <laughs> Let's not even go there. What's another wrong mentality that people have? They don't save for the future. Proverbs 21 verse 20. If you don't save for the future, you are unwise. They don't save. You say, Pastor, it's too small to save. That's the lie from the pit of hell. That's spiritual attack, praise God. It's too small to save. That is one of the biggest spiritual attacks when it comes to finances. It's too small. Pastor, it's too small. Ah, It's too small, it's too small. It's too small. The other mindset is this. People don't save for different seasons of life. You know, there are some principles. When it comes to finances, eh, you must understand that there are principles. But the principles must be tailor-made. For example, a time will come in your life that you will make a lot of money. But you know what you will do? You will not come. Uh, what's the formula again? I spend 30%. I save 20%. I do this. I do that. My brother... That ratio is assuming all things are equal. When you are making some kind of money, my sister, 100% of that money after removing tight must be saved. 100, I didn't say tight, 100% must be saved. But when you come and say, ah, you know, a pastor has told us it's only 20% saving. Says who? Says who? See, when we say some people come and say they are living on 30% 30, 30 of their income, you think it's a lie. If you make one billion a year, why can't you live on 30% of your income? What is 30% of one billion? That's 300 mil million. How many of you make 300 million a year? Why can't you live on that? So those percentages, it varies. So it's just this unhealthy mindset when it comes to money. They say money. That thing that is difficult to get. No, sir. See, for those that are parents here, let me, let, me, let me encourage you. Your children are growing older now. You need to give them the right mindset about money. One of the very important mindsets about money, and I learned this from Pastor B, that he does for his children is, they say they want something. They say, what will you do to get it? Why? Because money is not just like that. That's why a lot of us, the strategy we saw growing up is our... our our cousin, nephew, brother begging for money, which we think is a strategy. You want to get married, you say, these people are going to give me money. How can you do that? Are you in their mind? Are you a spirit? 
He now carried their name to NLP. Lord, let my help us. Let my help us. My brother. Be wise, bro. Before they carry your own name to NLP. Father, anybody that is disturbing my financial future, cut them off. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> let me run. What's the second reason why people are financially tied? Lack of skill. See, a lot of you read the story of Joseph. How he interpreted the dream. Awesome. But why did he become prime minister? Because he interpreted the dream. Of course not. Go and read the Bible. Genesis 41, 33. When, after he finished interpreting the dream, he now said, this is what Pharaoh should do. Because he saw, after interpreting, how, when you hear that kind of interpretation, won't you be sad? He said, seven years of plenty and seven years of drought. Hey, pa, ori mi yo. What's going to happen to the world? Then the guy said, man, prophet, eh, Pharaoh, calm down. This is what you should do. This is what you should do. You say, hey, who else can, tell, can help us do this aside this man? My brother, just come and collect the job. It was his skill that got him that work. This is why, hey, this is why blessing is more important than miracle. Miracle was that Joseph came and interpreted the dream. The power of God showed forth. But it's the blessing that got him the work. That this is what you must do to put the systems in place for this to happen. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. So, lack of skill. What is the strategy? And this is why one of the biggest... See, one of the most important prayers you must pray about your finances is, Lord, wisdom, wisdom, what to do. Problem is not a problem. The problem with problem is that you don't know what to do about it. Stop complaining about problem. Start asking, what do I do about it? Because every problem is the mountain of a man that is ignorant. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. What's the third reason why people are financially tight? Lack of discipline. Inability to follow through. You have these lofty dreams. This is much. You have goals from January. You have done nothing about it. You are not serious about your financial future. You are not serious. Every goal you have, see, even if you don't do it for any other thing, you must do this for your finances. Every goal you have, if there's nothing you are doing about it every week, that goal is a desire, is a dream, is a wish. And if, if it's by dreams, a lot of you, you know where you'll be now. A lot of you have dreamt about White House, dreamt about marrying Idris Elba. You know, you've dreamt different things. If it was by dreams, ah, you will not be here. Glory to God. So what are you going to do about it? A major, and this is, ah. In harvesters, you are not like that, praise God. But a lot of, of Christians, we are so lazy. We are so lazy. We are so lazy. And let me tell you something. In life, everybody sweats to make money. But let me tell you the difference. Some people sweat physically. Some people sweat in their brain. My brother, choose to sweat your brain rather than sweat physically. Choose to what? Sweat your brain rather than sweat physically. Because when you sweat physically, it's very limited. But when your brain is sweating, kabada. You know, scientists say that we only used 5% or something of our brain. I say, hey, what is the remaining 95% doing? Discipline, follow through. This is what I would do. I'm doing it now. Why have you not done it? Eh, Pastor, I'm afraid. See, let me tell you something. Everybody is afraid at some point. But let me tell you what you need to do. You must learn to do what you have to do with the fear. So you see fear like this. You say fear. Yeah, let's go. We are doing it too, but let's go together. You must be comfortable with the fear. You say fear. Let's go. We are going there. Two of us together. But we must do it too. By the time you do that regularly, your fear will begin to fear you. Your fear will begin to fear you. When, when fear comes, say, ah, this one, he doesn't respect us. So we have to respect him. Your fear will begin to fear you. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. And then, of course, fear of failure. Fear of failure. Fear of failure. See, failure is a path to victory. Did you hear me? It's a path to victory. 
it's a path to victory. And there's nothing wrong with mistakes. Just make sure you're not making the same mistakes. Praise God. There is nothing wrong with mistakes. Just make sure you're not making the same mistakes. You borrow somebody's money, they did not return it back. Wisdom should tell you that you don't borrow. You just give. So when next they come, just say, I will help you, but I will give you what I know that I don't need to ask again. Yes. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. And then part of lack of discipline, I already talked about it, is that mismanagement of your overflow season. There are sometimes, see, overflow is going to come. It's part, of the, it's part of the trajectory of life. If I ask you now, some of you, the kind of money you made two years ago, if you have the opportunity to make it now with the wisdom you have collected in harvesters now, your life will be different, true of us. Is it that God doesn't love you? He loves you. But that was an overflow season. Boy, you mismanaged it. You carried the money. Ah, oh boy, is this how they make money? Ah, let's just go. We're going to be blowing it. You know how this myth Forget about my future. My future will take care of itself. Your future is going to be... Bl- hey! He said, this life is for enjoyment. This life is for enjoyment. This life is for consistent enjoyment. It's not just for enjoyment. It's for consistent enjoyment. The purpose of wealth is to get consistent. I enjoy today. I enjoy tomorrow. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. So wherever you find yourself, be a career person, a career person, just you, you, are, you are in a job, maybe you are collecting 500K per month, and then you, you help somebody sell a car, and you get, I don't know, 5 million from it. What would the career person do? Say, ha, ah, I'm not a big boy. I'm not a big boy. I'm going to buy brand new cars. Why? Why? If that money didn't come, won't you still live on your salary? Won't you still live on your salary? A person with the right mindset will carry the, 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 the five million. Say, glory to God. Lord, I love you. Thank you. Pay his tight out of it, which is 500K. And say, Lord, I'm believing you for when I can consistently be paid 500K tight every month. You see two different mentalities. So I say, ah, pastor. And you talk to giving again. You talk to giving again. You see, eh? <laughs> hey, we are online. So, you know, let me just be careful with what I say. Because it depends on the mentality you have. See, what you must remember is this. A pipe that carries water cannot be dry. A pipe that carries water can never be dry. Some of you, when you see some money, see, what should come to your mind is, how can this thing work for me in my future? But you are just saying, yeah, my future will take care of itself. My future will take care of itself. Continue. Continue. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. And then, part of lack of discipline, this is so important. And it, this happens to a lot of us sometimes. Is that unwillingness to just give it what it takes. When it comes to finances and growing your finances, especially if you're a child of God and you're believing God to bless you, you must learn to give it what it takes, not what you can. Because sometimes what you can is not enough to what it takes. So you must find out, what does it take? And let me give it. What does it take? Let me give it. I need to do seven certifications to be medically certified. Let me do it. Not that, ah, uh-uh, it has been long since I left school. My brain is fried. My brother, go and pray for your brain to be on fried so that you can do the exam. If that's what you need to be successful in that field. Now come and give us excuses. Ah, uh-uh, pastor, it's not by the number of books. Now It depends on the industry where you are. If you don't like book, go to an industry where there's no need for book. But just know, see, I've said this before. Life is hard. Making money is hard. Poverty is hard. Surviving is hard. Choose your hard. You need to choose your hard. Which hard do you want? Because everything is hard. So make a conscious effort. This one is my hard. I'm I'm going for it. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. So how does God bless his people? I'm going to round up now. How does God bless his people? Fundamentally, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. The Bible says, be you transformed by the renewing of what? Your mind. 
the fundamental thing that must happen to you for your finances to be transformed is a mind renewal exercise. And I said this before. Mind renewal is not a one-off thing. It must happen consistently. Because your financial future is not just one target. How many of you have just one target? There was a time that the check, you know, when we're in church, and see, prophetic things are very important. There was a time, I remember, when we're still in Harvesters, um, in Bagada, it was just Bagada Church then. We wrote one check. I still have that check. That money was very big that time. But when I look at that check now, I say, I need to write, I need, I need to write another check. So for some of you, I don't know whether your financial, future, your financial blessing is just one thing. Lord, give me five million. That's all. Remember, money is currency. It continues to flow. So when you hold money, you say, ah, I now have one billion, hold it. That one billion, <laughs> it will disappear in no time. For currency to work, you must put it and let it be passing. Let it be passing. Let it be flowing. Money is a flowing thing. It must be flowing. How well does it flow? Flow in investments, flow in savings, flow in giving, flow in doing some things. It must be flowing. Wealth is flowing. That's why valuation goes up and down. It's flowing. You, how much do you have? Ah, Pastor, last year I had, 10, I had um, 200K in my account. I still have 200K in your account. You don't have 200K in your account. Very simple. Bank charges have taken out of it. Uh -huh. Inflation has affected it. Uh -huh. So you don't have 200K anymore. SMS charge has taken out of it. So better, I didn't say don't put money in bank. I'm saying your money must be flowing somewhere. This is why you need wisdom. Because if it is just put money in bank account, anybody can do that. But you need wisdom on where to flow the money so that the money can flow out and flow back in in multiple folds. Glory to Jesus. So how does it, God bless you? God blesses us by renewing our mind. There are some mindsets you must have. You have some mindset you must have. What is the mindset? See, ah, I love the scripture. I love John 15, 16, the message version. It says that you have not chosen me, but I've chosen you. And I've called you to bear fruit. And that your fruit will remain. Your fruit will not spoil. What did he now say? He says, as fruit bearers, glory to Jesus. As a fruit bearer, what are you called to do? I'm called to be blessed. That is my calling. My calling is a fruit-bearing calling. You say, ah, it was, it was better last year than this year. It's not possible. Because my fruit will continue to remain. If my fruit remains, it means what I did last year did not spoil. So, brother, when I add what I do this year, it will grow. That's what it means. I'm a blessed to be a blessing. I'm blessed to be a blessing. I'm blessed to be a blessing. All I need is a me. See, someone said, Pastor, I'm looking for capital, capital, capital. The big, greatest capital you need is inside of you. The greatest capital you need is what? On the inside of you. <laughs> How does God bless us? For me, always God bless us. And why am I telling you this? Because when God wants to bless you, you need to know, understand which of these ways is God, God going to bless you. And you can determine the way you want God, the way you want God to bless you. The first way is by working for money. So, you have a 9 to 5 job. You are trading your, your time for money. That's the first way God blesses us. You are trading your time for money. You give them your 9 to 5. For those of you that give effective 9 to 5, because some of you are cheating your employ employers. Because that 9 to 5, there's one hour for Facebook, two hours for Instagram Reel, one hour for chatting. By the time you finish... You just have three hours. You now say, let me work remotely, let me work remotely. They will not let you work remotely because you are inefficient. When you are efficient, they will allow you to work remotely. How do you grow in this area? You grow by growing your skill. You grow by growing your skill. You grow by obtaining high income skill. See what Jacob did. He said, just allow me. This, let me produce these ones. These ones that I produce will be mine. These ones I produce will be yours. He had the skill to produce what he wanted. If you are in a career, you must be, get to a point where you negotiate with your boss. A lot of you, at a level, you just came. They are still trying to know you. No problem. But a time must come that they will ask you, what do you want? And we've prayed the prayer. I prayed for you again. When you are in front of greatness, may you not ask for something foolish. 
Because after you have done all the business skills and justification, chairman now sits down. Oh, yeah, tell me what you want. Uh, well done, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, you know, I, I, I really love this company. What do you want? The guy has two minutes. Just tell him what you want. You start a parability, parability. Okay, 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 okay. We'll give you 10% increase. Is that okay? Ah, Pastor, thank you, sir. Someone say, God forbid. That's why a lot of people don't understand why people are going to startups. Because in startups, they, when they negotiate salary, then they'll give you something they call shares. Praise God. So from becoming a salary earner, you are already a business owner at the same time. Amen. So, how does God bless us? By working for money. The second way he blesses us is by selling something that we can earn a commission or profit from. And I love this one because you determine your profits. Sales people in the house, praise God. Because when, and I love salespeople, because they just say, what's the target? Just give us the target. So once I make above this, I get commission. Nice. You don't see them for two weeks. Then the third week, they come to the office. You start vexing. This guy has not been coming to the office, but the guy that came to the office, he just brought a deal of 100 million. Where did he go and get it from? I don't know. So for those people in this category, the way you grow your income is by selling items with high value. That's why real estate, the people that are doing it well, they are making the money. Amen. Because when you sell Banana Island house for one point something billion, see, can I shock you? The same money they used to build in Lekki is the same money they used to build in Banana Island. Can I even shock you? The same money they used to build in Ajagbaji is the same money they used to build in Banana Island. Cement is cement. Oh. Painter is painter. Plumber is plumber. The difference in price is the difference of location. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, so, Pastor, what are you saying? Let the Lord speak to you. Let the Lord speak to you. The third way is this. You can own an asset that yields income. You can own an asset that yields income. So that at least that is consistent. And then the last way is this. You can lend money to people. Lend money to people. You can do that through bonds and stocks. When God wants to bless you, he's going to use one of these four ways to bless you. Why is it important to know? Because as you pray, as you, as you research, as you think, which of these ways do you want God to bless you with? So I say, ah, Pastor, God has determined I'll be blessed by this way. No. He can, he can give you ideas, but if you want to be blessed, let me tell you what is better. At least be blessed by, have at least three of these four. At least three of these four. At least, what? Three out of these four. Praise God. Have you been blessed today? Come on, let's celebrate Jesus. Glory to God.